Welcome to the BDG Dynasty Fantasy Football Channel. Huge, huge day in the history of the company, but huge night incoming. Massive. Massive watch party happening for the first round of the NFL draft. If you're watching this six hours, eight hours, ten hours, I'm not sure. Make sure you're subscribed and you got the notification bell on because that'll let you know when we go live. We will be hosting the watch party right here. Live from the stew, me, Adam, Andrew, the dudes Hi. from the BDGE office will be cycling through as many men in here as possible. I mean, we, we can't even pause that. That was just... <laughs> That's what I was trying to say. That was trying to say you over success. We're going to cycle them. It's going to be a good-ass time. We're going to be doing giveaways. We are going to be doing... We're going to be spinning a wheel. There's a lot of silly shit that we're going to have to do within the wheel. Uh, He's shaving his beard. You're shaving your head. Yeah. Eyelashes eyebrows. are coming out. <laughs> your eyebrows. <laughs> it's family, baby. Uh, it's going to be a good-ass time, so make sure that you join us for the first round tonight. We'll be breaking down everything that happens that is relevant to fantasy football and then every morning after the rounds from the night before go live we will be doing full recaps which we will be putting up onto the channel so again make sure you subscribe it's going to be fun as hell in today's video what we're going to be doing is simply our first round mocks but only including fantasy relevant players so the quarterbacks wide receivers running backs and tight ends and in the pre-show, because the draft starts tonight, we'll be going live about an hour before the draft kicks off, and we will be exposing the rest of our first-round mock drafts, going through, you know, the tackles and the cornerbacks and all those guys that you guys probably don't really care about, but we care about. So we're going to talk about okay. some of the dudes we care about today. We're just going to kind of talk through our boards, and I'll just, I'll just start off by saying this. I think this will be, for fantasy, like the most fun top 10 NFL draft in maybe ever, maybe in my existence of being an NFL fan. Like, this is just jam-packed with skill players. I will say I was a little bit disappointed by the time I got to, like, the end of the first round. Like, mid-first round, I'm like, all right, we're probably out of, like, the skill player zone here except for, like, one or two more guys. Yeah. I thought it was going to be a little more girthy, a little more <laughs> oh, depth-worthy. We blow our load really early. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's what we do today. Um, okay, yeah, I mean, like, we all had Caleb as our one. We all have really? Jane Daniels going to Washington as our two. We all think Caleb's going number one. Simple. Yeah. I mean, I don't except know. for Colin Coward, I guess, right? Yeah, I think. Uh, maybe your Vikings have a chance to trade up and get him, you know? Caleb. Yeah, maybe they do. I, I told nah. Nick uh, earlier if we could trade 17 years of first round picks to go get Caleb, I'd probably do it. Would you trade Justin Jefferson for Caleb? Is he not worth 17 first round picks? No, he's worth 18. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Enough. <laughs> so we all have the same three first three picks. Caleb, Jane Daniels to Washington, Drake May to New England. Yeah, that's I was struggling with this for a while because I, I wanted to do what my heart wants, and my heart wants Drake May to be a Minnesota Viking. I've said it for many weeks now. I have had a tweet go out every day with Drake May in purple and yellow. I want that to happen. I don't think it's going to happen. The amount point. of smoke screens, yeah, I don't, I don't think. I, I think to get into those top three, like the thing is with those top three teams, they all need a quarterback so bad, and like you're not – guaranteed a top three pick in a class with like top three worthy quarterbacks every year so now's your chance to really go after them so to move back again it has to be like a legendary the, haul the only way i think it could happen though is like new england while they do need a quarterback they need damn near everything every so yeah. if you gave them enough of a haul like here's 11 here's 23 and you're gonna have to probably offer them something more maybe because everything, they're like listen it's not we're not a quarterback away yeah but but the the other on the other side of that is but you really don't know if they believe that though. Well, yeah. the, they the thing is that it, I think it really comes down to do they believe Drake May is the guy that's going to reset their franchise? If, right. if they do, it doesn't matter what you offer them. Or are they waiting to see what Washington does? Maybe they feel like they want Jaden and what, they want to see what happens there. Let me ask you guys this: Do you think there's any chance that McCarthy ends up in the top three, or do you think these three guys are solidified? Is there a chance? For sure, I if, think there is a chance. It, th all the all the the negative press coming out about Jaden Daniels right now feels like the ultimate like everyone wants Jaden Daniels therefore let's like start like the Giants maybe want in the Patriots maybe even want like they it feels like <clears throat> the fact that it's so negative is it pointing towards Remember him being number two. Remember a few years ago when the same thing happened with Justin Fields and he slid down the draft board. Yeah, it feels like that's Jaden Daniels. The only Daniels thing about right Jaden, I haven't see. Okay, right now today, like there was with, with Justin Fields. I don't know if you guys remember this. It was epilepsy? Justin Fields? Yes. It was epilepsy. Epilepsy. People were worried about it. I'm telling you, like, I, <laughs> go back, check the receipts. There, there has not been anything concrete. Like I've heard, I've seen these stupid rumors on X on 
Jaden Daniels on Malik Neighbors, but there's nothing concrete. Like there's no. That's what I mean. That they, they, they that kind of shit any, just they, makes me feel like it's a team behind them that wants that guy, and they're just saying shit. Like yeah. if you, the guys that have slid, there was epilepsy with field. The, the face bomb with freaking what's his name Tunsil, right? Yeah. There, there's been something concrete that makes a slide. Right now, there's and nothing concrete at all. The wasn't Traylon's asthma. Traylon had asthma, and he and, and he also he also struggled at the combine. I mean, he a little probably too. like did have asthma though. No, he I, did. No, guy couldn't did. stay on the practice field. But everybody was worried about the asthma for Maybe good reason, though. So. Yeah. yeah, but it, they, they should have been worried about other things, things that, too. Apparently, I think at the at the end of the day, all of these prospects, there's always one that has that negative press run right before the draft, and it seems like it's Jaden Daniels this year. The yeah. only thing is that it, there's even an it, ASU thing happening right now with Jaden Daniels naming it. But I, I can't remember the last exactly. time we, we've talked about a mock where there's four <laughs> quarterbacks that could go in the first four picks. It's been a long time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you got J.J. at four. That's where I you got I, your first trade. I down. basically did this to appease Andrew. But I actually do think that it's the most logical trade down for Arizona. I had them. To, I had Arizona going up to four, trading 11 and 23 to get it done. So, okay. okay. Um, and, and J.J. McCarthy's their selection at four. That's what I have. At four, I have Marvin Harrison Jr. I have that – wide receiver prospect sitting there staring them in the face. I know there was a point in the last couple of games of the year where there was like a meme going around of, of Monty Osenfort. He's the GM of the Cardinals right now, right? I think he was like looking at his phone. He was talking at the end of the game, whatever. They were saying like they blew the chance to draft Marvin Harrison Jr. I don't think they did. The quarterbacks have <clears throat> basically worked their way all the way up. Marvin Harrison, he looks like he's going to be the guy for Arizona, and I think they won't pass up on drafting him if he's there. Yeah, so interesting. I I think like with Marv, one, I, they're they've taken a really hard stance, and they talked about it. They did it last year too, where they don't they won't think about trades. Like they're not going to pull a trigger on any trade until they're actually on the clock, which I think is like desperate hour for teams, right? And that that might make sense why like the Vikings would be a team that would trade up. Or Especially where this is where they would trade up for back to back to back, and then it's just like now it's JJ or bust. It's got to be our guy. Yeah. Well, and I think that there's enough teams here that need quarterback, and if it happens this way, where it's Caleb, it's Jaden Daniels, it's May, is the, is JJ McCarthy the Vikings guy? Is JJ McCarthy the Broncos guy? Is does Peyton still want to move up? Like I think once it's the, that's the case, Arizona, I think will be taking a lot of calls at this time. I don't know if they'll end up making the trade, but I think they're going to be taking a ton. It's going to take one one team that gets real desperate and just says fuck it, like here's three firsts and a second. No, because because here's my thing, right? If you are Arizona and you sit there and take Marvin Harrison Jr., I I don't think anyone's going to debate that he is worthy. He is not worthy. Worthy is Xavier. Worthy. He's, yeah. Nick has him out of the first round, but. No, I think he's he's spoiler. He is one of the best uh, one of the best prospects we've seen. But there's also other receiver prospects. So if someone's offering eleven, in my mock, I have them getting Rome down at eleven, and that feels risky. Like to me, Marv is like a can't miss pick. Sure, and it's like we're rebuilding our team. We're like we should be a good team by next year with Kyler back and everything. Let's just hit on this pick and kind of move forward. And that's that's where I'm looking at. But I, I wouldn't be surprised if they ended up. <laughs> Dude, that, that would give for, a crazy haul. That would give Arizona for the record. That would put them with 11, 23, yeah. and 27. Yeah. They already have another first in this class. Yeah. My, my thing is like when you're in when you're in the top five, you're usually getting, for the most part, a can't miss prop. There, there are not a lot of top five guys, non QBs, that miss. A lot of the times that you're like grabbing those guys, they're blue chip Four prospects. Days. But it's, yeah, no, like 17 guys just came to my mind as soon as I, think, I said that shit. I think but, if they get desperate, they could. But everything that I've heard is that if it's not to go up into the top three, Minnesota's not moving that 23. It's it's going to be the 25 first that will really? be included. Everything that I've heard. Okay. Man, I, I feel like you're setting yourself up with a lot of, like, hard, fast things that could totally get broken on draft day. I, feel I mean, pretty. everything that we are talking about could totally be broken I mean, on draft day. A, a everything thousand, we're saying. Yeah, there, this is a mock that I have no sources for the record. <laughs> I'm not Nikki, you know, Nikki Leaks. Nikki Leaks over right. here. Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Facts. my shit's about to be perfect. Well, honestly. I know. That's right. why I'm let you all talk. Number oh, five, yeah. we got we, mean, got we got the charges. I, I got Joe All. I'm curious. I, I Now, here's the thing. I think where mine's going to go versus you, Marvin Harrison Jr. to Arizona, I feel like is what we all want. Like, as, as the dynasty community, we would love to see that, right? It locks him into conversations at 101, depending on what you need at quarterback, right? That's goaded with Kyler. But if he slips past Arizona, all of a sudden, where Marv goes, where Neighbors goes, where Rome goes, could play a little bit different of a factor. But I have the Chargers actually taking all. I think that the way they're building, while we want to see a receiver go there, I think they're building with – a run heavy approach and Joe Walt is yeah really really good. I just feel like they've already like their receiver group relative to their line group. Like on paper, so what you're saying makes sense, mm. 
But they've also, over the last half decade, used like two, if not three, first-round picks on linemen. And I feel like they have like a pretty good core there. Whereas like their wide receiver room is one of the worst in the entire league. I can't imagine they give Herbert nothing. And I get it, they're gonna go run first, but like they still have to have I mean Joe Alt something is at there least, for him to work it's with. It's not a weapon, but giving him Joe Alt is giving him a nice for sure bit of time. Yeah, and I wouldn't like really argue against it. I would just be surprised. That feels like so intense My, to go down. The only that, reason I that say way. that is I think that there's enough receivers in this class with what they want to do, they could take one in round two. True that, because they have that early second round pick. Correct. This feels like do you remember uh a few years back when it was the Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase, Penny Sewell meme yeah. where it was like if they drafted yep. Penny Sewell, then he would complete. Yep. This feels like that right now. A little bit. But since he's all line was a horrendous at Correct. the time, yes. they were and, terrible. And, you know, the way that since he's playing with Zach Taylor and the way that the Chargers are about to be playing with Greg Roman about to be. But also yeah. think about different. think about that. Like if the Bengals had gone with Penny Sewell and they had nobody to fucking throw the ball to, their offense would be stagnant as shit. Chase opened that offense up to a whole nother degree. And T, and T yeah. didn't just request a trade. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I got Malik at five. I'm just kind of enamored with him as a talent. You got Joe Walt. You got I have JJ, JJ. McCarthy okay. um, going number five. And this is because this is where the trade up Minnesota happens. trades up. I had them giving up uh, 11, the 2023 or, or the 2025 first round pick and a 2025 fifth round pick just thrown in there as well. So, so. they, oh, so they keep, uh, wait, they 11? 23. Okay, so so they keep twenty three here. Yeah, ah, interesting. they give up next year's first, this year's first at eleven, and then a future fifth. Uh, so they move up, they get that. I have him go get JJ McCarthy. So Harbaugh ends up being the reason why his boy JJ gets picked in the top five. That's kind of the the thing mm. here. But also Minnesota goes and gets their guy, and it doesn't cost them that extra twenty three. Maybe that's hopeful hopeful thinking from a Vikings fan. Feels a little hopeful, yeah. But I mean, it like feels said, it feels it, like Andrew drew up the smock for it sure. It does. Um, it does sound like at least beat writers in Minnesota and everything that I follow, they are saying that if it's not going up to get May, it's not going to be the 23rd pick overall. That's something that they wanted to keep. So we'll see what happens there. But I have them going to get J.J. McCarthy, future Vikings quarterback. And All right, so you got McCarthy at four. You got him at five. Now, I don't have a skill player at six, so we'll skip over the Giants. I had McCarthy going seven, and this is my first mm-hmm. trade, where the Titans – they kind of feel like the team that doesn't need to be in the top 10 right now. Like, Joe Alt feels like a luxury pick if he's there for them, but this tackle class is so fucking good yeah. that if they're at seven and Minnesota's like, we'll swap 11 with you and give you that 23 also or next year first, whatever the case may be, I had them swapping the 23 and the 11 for the seven. That makes a ton of sense for Tennessee, right? For me, because they could still get for sure. a, a tackle later on. They could still get whatever they want later on. You got sure. Minnesota still at 23 right there. Do I? Yeah, you got Minnesota taking Cooper DeJean. Cooper DeJean. I think that was supposed to be Tennessee. I think I maybe just forgot to put it into the trade okay. market or whatever, but it doesn't matter. Okay. Um, yeah, so I went J.J. McCarthy at seven. I had the Titans trading back so out we, of there. So We all my have, though, the player. Vikings coming up to get McCarthy. Yep. yep. Different spots. You have Joe Alt going to the Giants. I have I have uh, the Giants taking Marv. And what do you have the Giants doing? You got I them getting the league neighbors. neighbors. Okay. Yeah, so I have to go wide receivers sense. as well. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just... You look at that receiving core, and we talked about the Chargers receiving core. I think you could say even New York's might be worse. Honestly, you probably prefer Quinton Johnson and Josh Palmer to whatever they have in New York right now. So. Yeah, I think it's actually kind of the same conversation that yeah we just had with the Chargers, Giants. And I, I wanted to keep a skill player, but we'll talk about Joe Alt because he's just kind of in the mix of every skill player there. I had the Giants taking Joe Alt at six. So I'm looking at, like, the Chargers at least have good players on that O-line, right? I guess, I mean, the Giants, like Andrew Thomas is not – abysmal but like they've missed on some big time players joe alt like they're just as, they're just as bad on the o-line as they are at the Their wide o-line's receiver. horrendous yeah. that's what i mean like would you be surprised if they ended up taking joe alt no. I, I would only because of this like if they don't get a quarterback and they don't get a receiver they're joe not, alt joe alt is definitely like a, a, a incredible prospect as far as a tackle goes but it'd be just crazy to see them have dimes with no weapons again and just yeah. be like just give him extra time is going to be better yeah I, at the, at this point though, it wouldn't shock me a hundred percent. I I would be a you little. You just surprised. never know how those how the GMs in their mind because they probably think they're like incredible drafters and they they might be like, oh, we have like the best well, second round receivers, well, right? Awesome. Like we know how to gra- draft second and third round wide receivers. They, they definitely shit. could do that given that they have another early second. And Joe Alt is probably like I personally believe Joe Alt is uh, the best tackle by a good little bit. I do too. So. This was when I was saying, like, PFF's annoying as fuck because we can go back and, like, make changes after you did the draft. Yes. This is the one where I was like, 
if I were able to swap one pick, I would put Malik going to the Giants, or I would put uh, Joe Walt going to the Chargers and then Malik going to the Giants. Oh, mm. okay. Okay, that makes sense. Malik <laughs> Neighbors, I have him at six, and then I have Joe Alt seven to Tennessee. So it's pretty much the same kind of idea. Yeah, it doesn't matter. All right. I think Tennessee, uh, with bringing over, like, with Ridley and that big contract, I feel like um, if it's not all, like, I feel like Fashanu makes, I feel like they need to give Will some time. That offensive line needs help, too. So uh, I, I think they're going to be, I'd be kind of surprised if they don't go with a tackle at that spot or they don't try to trade back because I think you made a good point. They don't. They definitely aren't a great team, but they could make Tennessee. a yeah. – They might as well get a few picks and, like, just become – go from, like, an okay team to a good team. Correct. With, like, two big – Try to get more shots at the getting, dartboard. Yeah. So I think the next skill players we have, uh, we all have kind of, like, a tier of probably Rome and Brock Bowers going in one spot or another. Yeah. Uh, and you have – actually, you got Malik dropping all the way to nine. Yeah, so I got Malik going nine to the, the Bears. Okay. Then I, I got nine, ten, eleven. We got Malik at nine to the Bears. Brock 10 to the Jets, Rome 11 to the Cardinals. I don't think they're going to fall. That would be fucking sexy if Arizona was able to trade back and still grab Rome. Yep. Yeah. I I mean, kind of going in that same you, you idea, have, in that you, same tier, I have Rome Odunze going number nine right. to the Chargers. Yep. And this was a trade back. They traded back with Minnesota to get 11. I had them come back up um, to get Romo Odunze. They just went up two spots. They traded with Chicago. Chicago, I ended up having going with Byron Murphy. They just keep adding to that D line. But Romo Odunze, he goes to the Chargers there. And then also in that kind of similar tier, I have Dang, you Bo got, Nix go 12. You really to got Bo Nix going 12. Damn. I didn't even have Bo in my Neither first do I. round. Neither do I. And I don't, I mean, I don't love the pick at all. Like this would be a, a reach for Bo Nix, but I feel like this is one of those situations where Denver gets left out in the cold and they didn't get the move up. The move up went to Minnesota and now they have to sit there and choose. Do they, they want to go somewhere else and start Zach Wilson this year? Do they want to bring in another first round quarterback and kind of let this be a competition? I just, I went with the Bo Nix, Bo Nix going to Sean Payton's Broncos. I hate to be a, like a foreshadow, but this feels like you are by your mock. You're screaming. You really don't want the Vikings to have this happen to them. I are you projecting would, that? Well, I will say right now, if if if, if the Vikings stayed at eleven, and the took Vikings Bo Nicks, stayed be, eleven and they draft Bo Nix, I will lose my goddamn mind on this couch. Set, facts. See, on stream, Andrew, so if you want to see that on stream, Andrew's watch. mock to everybody looking at it doesn't look any different. To me, I see all through this. Andrew, if you if that happens, if they stay at eleven and take Bo Nix, you get all the consequences of all the wheels yeah. at once. Yeah, I'm tortilla slapping <laughs> the I'm shit tor- out of you. While you chug at C4 <laughs> and shave your beard. I will jump out the window. Okay. Well, deal. That's, that's, deal. End of the that's, stream for me. <laughs> end of the stream for me, dog. I'm done. Well, that just got dark. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I went. I went super chalky with Chicago staying <laughs> at nine and and taking Rome to pair with Caleb goes with Keenan DJ Moore. Uh, there's been a lot of like Rome and Caleb William media surfacing lately. They're doing they a bunch of shit together. Yeah. They were, they were the, taking photos together. I mean, there's something something there. Caleb's probably pushing so, the narrative a little Nick, bit. Nick, you and I both got Brock going top 10. Andrew, where do you got with the Brock? Jets. The Colts. I haven't fall to 15. Interesting. Colts. Yeah. I do wonder, like, the uh, the recent years, like, just the Kyle Pitts and, and does that affect the team wanting to go into the top 10? But I, I feel like it comes down to Rodgers. Like, it just, who does he want? It also felt like, to me, too, when I looked at it, it was, if he doesn't go at 10 to New York... The next couple teams don't really make sense to go Brock Bowers. It doesn't really feel like any of those are good landing spots for him. So the next one was. I kind of feel like you could make the, yes, but also, I don't know. Like, if he ended up going to, uh, I mean, for me, I had Tennessee trading back. Like, I could see him going to Tennessee. Uh, I could, I mean, Denver is not a terrible fit. I could see him going to, like, the Saints or something. Who who is he, like, oh, man, that would be a really bad pick for Brock Bowers to go to. Like, I don't don't think there's a, a, a team in that range that, like, they're solidified at tight end, and it would just be crazy for them to take Brock Bowers. Just, He's that good of a prospect, in my he opinion. He is, and I just don't I, – I just can't see him going to any of those teams. And we've also heard a lot of the uh, rumblings lately of Brock Bowers being linked to Indy. Like, there have been a lot of rumors about – them liking, Chris I mean, if Ballard, he, if he, Brock Bowers in that I'm building. sure a lot of, of people course. like and Brock Bowers, but if he's at, if they're at 15, he's got to get past the Jets. Yeah, but we've heard we've heard potential rumors of move ups for Indianapolis, which is out of character yeah. for them. They don't normally do that, but we've heard them potentially move up. Right. I don't think they are going to have to move up to get Bowers. They could, but I don't think they're going to have to because I have the New York Jets addressing the offensive line. 
That's we fair. They're the either going to go O-line or tight end. I, think I know that's, that's a bad spot for him. And the last memory we all have is Aaron Rodgers on the ground because of Because his tight ends protection. didn't get open quick enough and he that's couldn't actually, get the ball out. If Garrett Wilson would have got open quicker, we'd have been okay. That's my only problem is, like, is why I think they're going to go Brock over a tackle is because their receiving group is also atrocious behind Garrett Wilson. Like They brought in Mike Williams, but he's also coming Mike off. Mike Will made it. I mean, he's injured. Like he's. I don't believe that he's going to be like – Prime Mike Williams. Who's more hurt? Love Alan Lazard. Who, who's more hurt? Aaron Rodgers or Mike Will right now? Facts. Mm, Rodgers is just throwing. Uh, Mike Will tore his ACL, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. ACL. So, I, I guess I, we'll call them the same right now. <laughs> so, so Mike Will feels like a little bit more of like a, we hope he's good to go, but I, I don't feel like secure about keep him. Keep in mind, there's still a ton of free agent wide receivers available right now. So we Tyler all have. Boyd, a bunch of other guys are still available. Like they can still get somebody after the draft. True. We all have, uh, Nick and I actually both have uh, Latham going to the Saints. We all have tackle going Saints as we kind of get through this part of the mock here. Next skill players, really, it is a uh, wave here of no skill players going. So we us. have, ooh, okay. Let's talk about the Brian Thomas landing spot because that's the next skill player for all of us. For sure. So you had him going to Cincy at 18. Yep. I had him going 19 to the Rams, and you had him going 20 to Pittsburgh. Yes. And what's kind of awesome is you had Adonai Mitchell going to Pittsburgh at 20. I originally had him going 20 to Pittsburgh, and then I moved him down to link up where you had him going 28 Buffy. to Buffalo as well. Buffalo. So All that right, gets yeah, this that, is get, a good, that gets spicy, yeah. This um, is a good spot to talk about. Adonai feels like, like a Deontay Johnson placement verbatim. Well, so I think – the, the Steelers, since Tomlin's comes, it's 2008, they have not taken a first-round receiver. Yeah. And the idea behind this, I think, though, is that later on in drafts, they can get a really talented guy. And then they, you basically see them not ever want to attach really high pain, payments to anybody. They gave Deontay that contract, and then they moved him pretty quickly. They typically move on from these guys. I think, actually, in a first round, though, if they believe the guy's talented enough— there's a fifth year option, which basically yeah. means that you can keep him for a longer period of time. We've seen them do this with Lev. We've seen them do this with Najee Harris. Um, so I think that Bell wasn't a first rounder. Who? Bell. Oh, I'm sorry. You're right. But they, but they, but what they do with him? They franchise tagged him. They just kept. They just kept trying to pay him it's, not much. It's giving him more money, but not the full extension type of money. That's what I think would be here is the opportunity to give him that fifth year option and keep him without having to give him a huge bag. But yeah. Yeah. the other thing about this is I, I, I go to the clip of, if you guys saw uh, Mike Tomlin talking about a lot of coaches run from coaching. I don't know if you guys saw this. He says, I, I've run to coaching. And Adnai to me is one of the, like when you watch the tape, there's moments where he takes plays off and he's talked about even taking plays off. But he has some of the most dynamic um, athletic traits in this class outside of the guys really high up. Yeah. And I feel like, Tomlin would want to run to get a guy that athletic and coach him up. And they do a great job with their receivers. The uh, article that came out recently about his blood sugar and him being a problem in the locker room and things like that, that feels like a Pittsburgh receiver. That fits the narrative Facts. right there. Well, okay, so the reason I ended up moving off him at 20 is because they've been so good at finding second and third round wide receivers. For you know sure. what I was saying? How, like, the Giants might look that way or whatever. That's actually how I feel like Pittsburgh should operate. They're like, we're kind of nice with identifying those. So so you have Brian going ahead of Adonai. Yeah. I didn't have any receivers, so the next best wide receiver for me was Brian Thomas. Uh, he's my clear-cut wide receiver four in the class. Like I almost, think, I think draft-wise he is for okay. me too. I think at this point he's almost put himself in his own individual tier as that wide receiver four. I have him go to Pittsburgh. Kind of same idea as what you talked about. Sure. There's definitely a need to come in and fill that Deontay Johnson role. They need another guy. I can't imagine that they're going to be going out with Calvin Austin or who, uh-huh. Van Jefferson or whoever it may be at that number two. That's just not what they're going to do. <laughs> right. Brian Thomas is so – I think he fits that offense so good because he is going to kind of be a field stretcher. He's going to bring an extra element to that offense that not necessarily – uh, can be fulfilled by a guy like George Pickens. Also, I think he complements the Pat Fryer. I mean, some of the other stuff as well. I, you, don't, just, you don't think there's a too much overlap between Pickens and Brian Thomas's game in terms of being like a downfield threat? I think they're they're downfield. They both are downfield threats for sure. Like, but I feel like I, where I Russ think, is at in his career, he needs someone who's like a better playmaker by the line of scrimmage. And Brian Thomas can move by the line of scrimmage, but yeah, like yeah, I've I think that that could that's help why I too, feel like I think Adonai. Brian Thomas is <laughs> I think Brian Thomas is more complete than George Pickens as a I would agree, runner, and I think he yeah. can do more things. I, than I don't I don't think anyone disagrees. George with that. Pickens there, I th- I definitely hear the the need for that, but also I could argue that Pat Frymuth is going to be the one with close to the line of scrimmage and kind of work in the middle of the field there. So I, I think that also uh, either way you you cut it. Like people love to hate on Russ, and I mean he's not that good. How anymore. long is it, Russ? 
But well, we don't know. But I do think Russ is still uh, a guy that throws a pretty good, like deep contested catch ball, and there's nothing wrong with this. That. Almost feels like what we saw out of Cortland Sutton last year, where Cortland Sutton was pretty good for our fantasy football teams. This is like Cortland Sutton plus plus. Well, yeah, I mean, dude, Brian Thomas Wilson's. can take off too. Yeah, I, I think either one of these guys uh, would would make sense. I I have Brian Thomas going 18. I think that if he was there, I I, I could definitely see the Steelers saying this is. A talent we can't pass up. I the fact that you almost put a first round receiver to the Steelers, we would have all three had it like that. Now I'm like, oh man, are we gonna? Oh, maybe the Steelers don't even. They're just gonna take around. a tackle. Yeah. The need, the need is just so massive. But I, I understand. But they also that, really need O line. I understand bad. that you you also have a deep receiver class, and <clears throat> maybe this is a team that just gets a Ricky Pearsall later in and says, so I let's have, just go with it. Yeah, because I have right now. Look, see, I have a bunch of tackles come off the board. I think that if Mims or somebody else like uh, in that mold is there for Pittsburgh, they can't pass on them. Their offensive line is in shambles. Yeah. But I think that they will take a receiver if all those uh, really good ta- talented tackles in this class go earlier. Which yeah. typically you see teams in the teens like not let tackles fall. Yeah. yeah, that's the other thing. Like tackles are such a premium position that the fact that there's this, this many guys this late into the first round is like. It's kind of fascinating. Well, yep. so so you have Brian go yep. to Cincinnati. So talk a little bit about <clears throat> yeah, the I think, fit there in Cincy. I, I think that this is a a team that is not going to be able to get a deal done with T Higgins. This is them basically. We, I mean, we just that report that just surfaced that he yeah. is that new though. Like it's I it just got it's it new that he requested that he a trade. Requested. Apparently, I, I think it's not really that new, but. It, this is apparently the first time he's actually like formally requested a trade. I um, would say, dude. I mean, we've had a decent amount of like draft day trades of high end receivers he in recent could be years. Traded right after they make that pick. No, yeah. I, th- I think this. I think this pick, whether it's beforehand or after, they're they're, they're signaling like, all right, T, we're not getting a deal done with T. We bring in Brian Thomas because we need someone else that's not Jamar Chase uh, to really help Joe Burrow. And I think that the way that they uh, attack the ball offensively, LSU, they just LSU, LSU, LSU everywhere. It, it lines up. It's it's that AJ Brown being traded and then this immediately add Traylon Burks. <laughs> it's the same thing. Hopefully that Brian Thomas is not Traylon Burks, but well, they already have the pick. Like <laughs> yeah, yeah. AJ Brown. He also feels like but a you good, move the guy and then you replace the guy immediately. Sure. Yeah. He feels like a good replacement. Or he feels like a good opposite side for Jamar Chase. He like can, he could do anything that T Higgins has been doing. Yeah. I, I, I took, I I I took Brian Thomas to the Rams. I just feel like McVay and Stafford are like, we got one year, two years left. Like, instead of trying to fix all the holes, let's Ooh. just double down on our strengths. And let's just try to make an offense that, like, the NFL has never seen Stafford, before. we don't know how much your back has, but we are going to find That's out. That's what I'm saying. Well, think about, okay, when McVay came in the league, right, and he was running that 11 personnel, three wide receivers said that just couldn't be stopped. Like, right. no defense could figure out how to do it. They always had some random speedster that they tried to put in place, right? They had, like, Brandon Robert Cooks. Woods, Cooper Cup, right? And then they had to have a field stretcher, and it was Brandon Cooks. And it was they always tried to put one speed guy, Deshaun Jackson, whatever the fucking case may be. This feels like Brian Thomas could be that dude. Think about that receiving trio. Well, they would throw the ball fifty times. Brian a game. Tom, yeah, Brian, you put Brian Thomas is definitely running out there at the X, and you got both Puka and Cooper Cup. You can put in the slot. It would be it would be pretty nice. I'm saying like Aaron Donald's gonna uh, Aaron Donald's is gone, right? And you could say like let's try to replace the interior uh, line and like have a guy develop. It's like where does that really get you by yeah. next year? And it's like let's just fucking go all in on what we're good it at just, right now. It's not like it's a major point, but mm. also keep in mind that Tyler Higby. It's probably not going to be healthy for a majority of the beginning of the season because he had that late ACL tear. So he's a receiving weapon for them right now that is not going to be on the field early on. Maybe they just get another one. I don't know about all that. Maybe they get Brock Bowers. <laughs> that would be a cool, a little cool landing spot, actually. Brock <laughs> Bowers, Bowers going to the Rams would be chaos. Chaos. This fucking first round is going to be f- it's going to be awesome. Yeah. It's going cr- to be amazing. Okay. I, I think then we have pretty clearly uh, a I next have, little drop-off. I have one more trade. Yeah, I have one more trade up here. Do you? Okay, what do you got here? So I had Vegas coming into the first round, coming back into the first round to Mm. get Penix there at the end of the first. So you guys each have five quarterbacks going in round one. I've got four. One, two, three, four, done. Okay. And then, uh, yeah, then I took Adonai going to Buffalo. I just, I think that's a great fit. Buffalo is so fucking in need of playmakers right now. I think that would be such a good... That would be that would be close to best case scenario for Buffalo. Like, I don't I don't think there's any way Brian Thomas falls that far. No. no. So that would be really I think a good this, a good thing for. This Buffalo. is best case scenario for Buffalo. Best case scenario for Josh Allen. Best case scenario for Adonai Mitchell. Like this is this is the. Yeah, it's the perfect storm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's everything you want. 
Now you have Andrew. You really did that too, Keon. Put, yeah. Go mm-hmm. to Buffalo in the mm-hmm. first round. That would be kind of tragic. Talk Keon, about man. it. Ke- Keon, I think as a as a big slot, if you use him the right way, I think could actually be really really dynamic. I don't know that. Buffalo can simply, in this draft, replace... Say what you want about Gabe Davis, but you're losing Gabe Davis and Diggs. That's their whole offense. Yeah, yeah like, if I don't <laughs> think that you can just replace that with one pick here in the first round. I think Keon is um, someone that they can put into the slot, and they're going to have to address the receiver position more. But Again, later in the same draft. Mm-hmm. Now, in my video today where we talked about the landing spots for wide receivers, Diggs and Gabe Davis, plus they had like Trent Sherfield and some other guys who left the team, they lost 52% of their receiving targets. It's honestly lower offense. than I imagined. I thought it would be bigger. That's more than half of your passing offense that has sure. walked out the f- – like there is going to be such a huge – Who's 40? I'm trying to think who were the 48, though. Yeah. I, I mean, guess Cook probably. Gabe. Kincaid, Cook, and Knox. Kincaid, actually, Kincaid had 93 targets. Shakir. 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 He had 90. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it's also Quietly. I did not realize he had that yeah, many yeah. Whoever – the case, the case remains, like whoever gets drafted there is probably walking Massive. into like an 85 target – floor as a rookie now uh, the At one the one minimum, thing about that is minimum. the one thing about the Keon pick is I think he would fit really well as a big slot with that with Josh Allen a guy that can go up and get it but they, they might have more plans for to use Kincaid kind of as a big slot versus how, a real tight end that's what I don't know yet I'm more so I don't know the answer how much does Curtis Samuel play in the slot mm, I mean typically he's played a lot in the slot but right? You could put him outside. I forgot Kurt. <laughs> over Curtis there. Samuel's over there, yeah. Curtis. Like sneaky, honestly, I think. He's a sneaky goat. I think he's, he's about to be the sneaky goat yeah. this year. He's about to be a sneaky link goat. Once was a top 24 receiver. Fucking damn near last year. One fucker popped off for me in like three leagues. I remember I kept damn. starting him. He's I kept damn. being like Kurt or Jahan Dotson, and I would just be like, Kurt's better, and I kept starting him. How did, you luck, be, how did you luck into keep starting Curtis it Samuel on my Adonai always. or Keon, or it could just be Curtis Samuel. I mean, uh, <laughs> why draft a receiver when you got Curry? They're about to run that sheesh. Um, uh, all right, so we, you guys, we also have Xavier Worthy. You both guys are going. both fucking idiots and took Worthy. <laughs> it just, it's just, it's just not gonna happen. The Chiefs just don't take. They're not gonna go with the wide receiver at the end. They have other problems that they need. They're gonna go with the tackle. They, they they're just what, not a team that would take what Xavier other, Worthy. What are their the other first. problems besides <laughs> receiver? Tackle. They well, okay. Let me let me rephrase. It felt like with what Mahomes did, with what he didn't have, that they need receiver in a it big way. It feels like every year they need that. But then but they went th- out, th- they, Rashi is- Rice hit, and then they signed Hollywood Brown. I just don't think they're going to use their first rounder. I think they'll address receiver. It ain't going to be his fucking ass, and it ain't going to be in the first and round. Then, you hate, and then you hate Worthy Rice more than you hate the selection cars. of receiver. No, I would have disagreed with any receiver that went there. <laughs> did he not? Interesting. What did you say? What? He said Rashi hit, and then he hit six other cars. So He's going to be out for two games. Teams don't draft <laughs> based on a two-game suspension. Ah, uh, you know what? Yeah, don't Tyree talk about Tyreek Hill didn't even get suspended, and they drafted the Tyreek Hill replacement. Be, because the reports around Tyreek Hill were like, he, they, it was unknown. What he did, they could have been out for like a year. We didn't actually know at the time. And also, we have no real, like, oh, they drafted Miko because Tyreek Hill was out kind I of also, thing. Maybe they just like If Nicole. you think this is a bad pick, I won't put it past them because what if they have made some alarmingly surprising picks of, of late. In they're, they're about to cut Sky Moore, and they spent premium capital on Sky Moore. Round so two. that should teach them not to do that again. We, we did just draft tackle. You know what we didn't do? We didn't draft early him. enough with Sky Moore. We got to go get him in round one. Enough. Yeah, we missed out Andy on the good Reed, players, baby. so we need to go get. Where honestly, where does Xavier Worthy sit in your rankings right now? I know we just finished them up. I think overall thirteen in Superflex wide receiver, mm, like seven, seven, I believe. I think I have him seven to eight, something right now. Yeah, I can't I remember I'm so top. far down. I think like wide so receiver fifty nine. It is you are, you are against. He's below Curtis Samuel. I'm, I mean, I've been yeah. that way since it's, the fucking it's rippy. It's been that way, but yeah. I, I, I don't think this is. I mean, I made the, I made the damn pick, but I don't think it's a bad pick. I think this makes sense for. Right, it just makes too much sense that it's hundred percent not going to happen. Nick wants no. What's going to be great is no, no, no. after all kinds of chaos, we have the draft, and then they lock in Xavier Worthy to just. What happens when they put trade it all in stone? When they trade you could have put up like to get Xavier you could have put like Keon Coleman there. You could have put anyone there, and I would have disagreed with you. Why putting would him I there. put Keon Coleman? He's like not you. I just mean in general. No, you, I'm just kidding. You, you, <laughs> fuck. you know, you know what, you know what we I just realized none of us have is Lad in the first round. Damn, he's just, uh, he's, he's a, not first round caliber. To be he's honest. early I'm, second, early facts, second. Facts. Yeah. Yeah, he's, it's gonna be. Fun he's gonna go between thirty three and like forty two. Day Lad two, McConkie, the first of uh, the first fifteen a picks, Carolina Panther. like seventy five percent of them are gonna be wide receivers. The first ten picks. Well, damn. How many receivers you guys got going? Actually, I think I have seven. Not as many. One, Worthy. Two, I think I went Keon, five. Brian I've Thomas, Adnan. Six. Yeah, I've got seven. 
I have five, six. six, seven. Five QBs, five receivers, one tight end, f- no running backs. I hope I'm wrong because I want it to be more fantasy skilled players, but I'm not like I'm just so accurate with it. I just know you that's just not what's gonna happen. Know the future. Oh, Nick but, really just honest. Nick really just tried to kill us at the end. To get out of this draft, like the Chiefs, nothing the fun Chiefs happened other just than Pax trading up. I just, I'd be hitting. That's what I'd be doing. And he, and he gives Mitchell a sexy landing spot. There's a lot of, there's a lot of bias in this one. This is what's going to happen. <laughs> we this thought I was a, biased for the Minnesota stuff. We're not even. Yours is in a different <laughs> stratosphere of bias. You shut your mouth over. You this. know exactly what you did. Hey, with yours. I didn't have them go up to get May. I, I held myself. Now hold back. on. Before I held we myself do, back. One thing's for sure. This is now the third year we don't have a first-round pick. There is no fucking bias coming from me. The Browns have no first-round pick and no quarterback. It's all bad. They trade Deshaun Watson for the 101 they drafted. The mistake on the lake is what we are called, and it's not wrong. Mistake on the lake. Crazy. All right, so that's every fantasy-relevant player that we had mock going in the first round. Again, we're going to be live tonight kicking off around 6.30 p.m. Eastern time, maybe 7. We can't even figure out what time the fucking draft starts. So about an hour, maybe an hour and a half before. So make sure you join us for the pre-draft stream where we'll be going through every player in our mock drafts, not just the fantasy-relevant players, so we could yap a little bit more about that. And then we'll be live for the entirety of the draft, and uh, that's going to be fun as hell. So It's going to be a ton of yapping. Andrew's going to be... We're going to need to cycle come some hang other out. You well, guys get to hang out with the guys, so come do it. Luckily, when Bo Nix goes off at 11, there will be no more Andrew on the stream. I'll be right out that window. <laughs> That's actually <laughs> true. What, what street is this right here? Actually, we don't need to say Not on camera. The, it's, the street, it's, it's the street where Andrew lies. That street is where I'll be. All right. All right. Take us away. No. We're better than that. Do you eat this? That's no. Nope. I almost hit you with a skull chant on the way out, but I won't do it. After what you did on the last video group we did, come on. Give me something here. We'll see you guys at the live stream. Peace out. Hi.